Hello and welcome to the today's Twinket update. I would like to start with the Twinket HMI and the new LDAP server extension. You can use this server extension to easily connect your HMI user management to the Windows Active Directory, which means if it fits to your workflow, you can use the same user for the login into the device itself, but also for the login into the Twinket HMI client. In the third quarter of this, uh, this year, we are going to release a new version of the EtherCAT diagnosis, which will be fully integrated in the Twinket HMI. So it automatically creates the I.O. topology view and displays this topology view within a specific control. And it is possible to zoom into a specific area, for example, these components. And it is even possible to select a single terminal to get a very detailed overview about this terminal. In addition, this control supports hot connect groups, and it is possible to force values within the HMI client. So in case of a service case, you have a very powerful tooling directly integrated in your Twinket HMI. And this new diagnosis control is available for free, so you only have to add the Twinket HMI license and no additional license. With the current version, we have added various use case oriented controls, like for example, a password control or a spin control, which you can use to select easily a value within your HMI. Or for example, this audio control to start and stop an audio stream. In the second quarter of this year, we are planning to add a scope integration into the Twinket HMI, which means there's going to be a specific scope control, which you can use to display a standard Twinket 3 scope within your HMI client. And for that, you can easily use existing scope configuration. Um, and in addition, we have a toolbar on top where you can start and stop the record as you are used to and also zoom in and zoom out. And this scope integration um, only needs a Twinket HMI license and a scope license to be ready to use in the Twinket HMI. Also, in the second quarter of this year, uh, we are planning to uh, add a totally new uh, tooling, which is the project template generator. You can use this tooling to generate the basic structure of your new HMI project without having to manually set all the different containers. So you simply drag and drop, for example, the header on top, the navigation on the right side, and other containers if needed onto the screen. And then you can also uh, select the structure of the navigation, which means you can um, add different pages on different levels. And then you're simply generating your HMI project um, and you can directly start uh, implementing your HMI without having to care about these basic steps. From point of view of measurement, we also have some updates. For example, the scope has now a 3D chart integrated where you can have different perspectives from which you are analyzing the 3D data. And you can also have a smooth movement between different perspectives. From point of view of target browser, we have added a new external data source, um, the database server. So any database which can be configured and used with the help of the database server can now also be connected to the target browser and therefore also be, the data can be used in the scope itself. On condition monitoring side, we have new algorithms for spectral analysis but also for fatigue damage, for example, for buildings, bridges, or every kind of machine which actually has a cyclic load. And if we are talking about analysis, we can also give a short overview about the updates of Twinket Analytics. And here you can see the update of the Analytics Logger, which enables you to really easily select the I.O. devices which you would like to log. So it is the same I.O. tree as you are used to from Twinket. You simply can search for a specific terminal, 
for a specific channel or even for specific data points which you would like to activate for the exchange. And in addition, um, we are, and this is more or less a global topic for Twinket, uh, we have integrated a workflow to automatically synchronize timestamps. Because if you have various machines which are connected to the same, for example, analytics logger, uh, the timestamps need, need to be synchronized. Only then it's possible to really do analysis of the different machine at once. And in this case, we have added an external time provider, uh, which automatically corrects the timestamp with an offset. So only one reference watch is selected, um, and then all the timestamps are corrected according to this reference watch. We have also added a new algorithm for analytics. Um, this is the linear regression algorithm, which is now available with, I think, about 60 already algorithms which are available within the analytics library. And as you know, you can automatically generate PLC code, and you can also use the one-click dashboard to automatically generate the HMI code for your analysis functionality. And for that, we also need new HMI controls. So for the linear regression, we also have added a new charting to display the result of this algorithm. In addition, we have also added controls for um, the energy monitoring, which is then going to be possible in the Twinket HMI. From point of view of vision, I would like to concentrate today on the integration into the in uh, engineering. As you can see here, we have a fully integrated image stream of the vision um, images into the scope chart. So here you can see, in addition, um, the images. And you even have a movie track, which you can use to select a specific or search for a specific image. Um, and then you can start analyzing the data. On top, uh, it is possible to also use specific chem charts to only show additional image streams without adding standard scope charts. And the vision component is also fully integrated into the HMI, which means, as you can see here, that we have different controls which are planned for the second quarter of this year. First of all, an image control, which is already pretty powerful because you can start and stop the image stream, you can zoom in, you can change the position of the image, uh, and you can also add region of interest, as you can see here in the right image, where you can specify uh, regions of your image which should be analyzed. And in addition, on the lower side, as we can see in this image, we do have uh, information about the current cursor position and also the color code in this position. And we can use the second color control on the upper side of this uh, slide to display this color. And also, it is possible to use this, client, uh, this co um, control to um, easily change the lower or upper limit of a color which you would like to detect with the help of vision. So for example, if you would like to detect the color green, then you could use this control to easily change the upper or lower color limit. Also, the configuration is possible within Twinket, the configuration of the cameras. And it is pretty comparable, actually, to Axis, where you can configure the Axis, and startup parameters are automatically created. And in case of a camera, this is then init commands, and those init commands can now also be displayed within a second um, tab uh, within the engineering. So you can get an overview, and you can also enable or disable certain init commands. If we are talking about machine learning, there are also quite some updates. For example, the standardized exchange format, ONNX, is now supporting SVM models. So you no longer have to use the back of specific XML, but can use the standardized exchange format to import the model information into Twinket. 
Machine learning is now also supported for Twinket BSD, and we are planning to add uh, more uh, model types in summer this year. From point of view of connectivity, we also have some news which I would like to share today. With the help of the new HTTP REST product, we can now also connect an AWS management RP, but also the Siemens MindSphere. From point of view of OPC UA, we can now, in addition, add the TC event logger. With the help of an interface, we can convert those events of the Twinket event logger into OPC UA events. And for alarms, which can be confirmed, it is even possible to do the confirming part on the side of OPC UA and the info is sent back to the Twinket event logger. In, in April this year, so this month, we are going to um, release a first version of the beta of the OPC UA pubs up. So if you are interested in this product, please contact the back of sales department. And last but not least, um, we, I would like to mention that we have a tool supported workflow for the integration and also the usage of different companion specifications. This includes the import of the data types into the OPC UA server, but it also includes the automatic creation of those data types within the PLC. And you can even um, already define the number of instances of those different data types. So this is a pretty deep integration where you can use all those um, different companion specifications like VDMA, Robotics, Umati, or Euromap, for example. Regarding Twinket Cloud Engineering, I would like to share the first success story. Because of the coronavirus, it was necessary to change the Twinket training from an on-site training to a virtual training. And normally, we have a predefined set on each of the PCs where the attendees working on. And in this case, this is not possible. So we use the cloud engineering to define a specific image for this training. So we could install all those uh, software versions which are necessary for this specific training. And the attendees could um, simply connect to this cloud in engineering instance and start the training directly without having to install anything locally on their PC. In addition, we have, with the current beta version, added the possibility to choose between multiple regions. So you can easily choose within the configuration part where your cloud engineering instance should be hosted. And the cloud engineering looks like this. So in this case, you have three different instances already added. The first one is already started. Therefore, I can stop and connect to this instance. And we can see the status also over here. And the second and third engineering instance is stopped, which we can also see with the status here. There are a lot of additional information which are easily accessible here. For example, the IP address, if you would like to connect to the cloud engineering instance, or for example, the Twinket version, which is installed. And now, if you press the Connect button, a second tab is automatically opened and is showing a remote desktop connection to your cloud engineering instance. The last topic for today is going to be about the new version of the XCAT interface. And this new version is based on a standardized exchange format, which is called Automation ML. And we have added a new product, the so-called Automation ML Data Exchange, to exchange IO topology data um, via the Automation ML format. So if you have now, for example, your IO topology ready on the ICAT tool side, you can simply export your IO topology and import it on the Twinket 3 side. And the whole IO topology is then automatically created without um, having to add anything manually. And with the help of unique AML IDs, it is possible to specify each of the components which is added uh, to the AML format, which enables us to have an incremental data update. So if we are in an early phase of the project, we can more or less 
parallelize the electrical design and also the control development. So we can export an early version of the I.O. topology and then import it into Twinket 3. And we can start working already on Twinket 3 side and continue working on the ECA tool side. And if we have now a second version ready of the I.O. topology on the ECA tool side, we can then import this um, topology into Twinket 3. And then automatically the Twinket project compare tool is started, which enables you to easily um, merge, but also compare uh, the I.O. topology which already exists with the I.O. topology which should be imported. So even if you have done changes um, to the already existing I.O. topology in Twinket 3, you can um, save those changes and you can only import the new content or the changed content. At a later stage in your project, you can also use the bidirectional data exchange. Because if you may be doing the commissioning, changing the I.O. topology on the Twinket 3 side, then it is necessary to um, send those changes back to the ICA tool side to update the e-plan for documentation purposes, but also in case of a service case. And this is possible also uh, with the help of the automation ML format and those unique IDs. So we can simply do the changes in the Twinket side export those changes and import them into the ECA tool site. And on top of this workflow, we have now added the new XCAD interface version. And this XCAD interface is using internally the automation ML data exchange uh, to import but also export the IO topology. And in addition, we are now adding um, further functionalities with the help of so-called XCAD plugins. So it is possible to actually enrich the automation ML file. And we have predefined plugins available already, for example, to create a global variable list, already add variables to this list, which are based on a tech table, which is um, available in the automation ML format. And we can also already connect those PLC variables with the um, IOs in our IO topology. So also the links are automatically created. And as we are talking about totally different tooling worlds from ECA tool side to Twinkert 3 tool side, we also have to make sure that the variable names, um, which are part of the automation ML, are converted to a valid PLC variable name. And for this purpose, you can use the second predefined plugin, a converter plugin, which you can use to change the variable names to be a valid PLC variable name. And in addition, if it fits to your workflow, you can also add, for example, prefixes like a B for a bool variable. And last but not least, it is in addition possible to add comments, which are also saved on the automation ML format side, uh, on the variable side, but also on the I.O. side to enrich the information which are displayed. And you can also change the name of the um, channel endpoint, which is actually linked to your I.O., uh, to your PLC variable, and add the comment on this side, but also rename it with the name of the PLC variable, for example. And if you have standard components, which have like a basic set of functionality, it is in addition possible to add an XTI file and save in this XTI file those predefined settings, for, sp for example, for a specific terminal. And then you simply use this information added within the AML file and the XCAD interface then automatically detects this template information and imports those information during the import. And this is already the end of this uh, Twinket update, and I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>